Well, Felis Bennis directs the New Internationalism Project at the Institute for Policy Studies. She works as a writer, activist and analyst on Middle East and UN issues and joins us now live from Washington, D.C. Thanks very much for coming on Al Jazeera to discuss this. Um, just listening to some of those strong words by members of the OIC there, how much do you think they are all lining up um, behind the Palestinians on this? Or how much do you think vested interests are actually going to come into play here? And I'm probably thinking quite a lot about the Saudi Arabia. Well, I think it's not only Saudi Arabia. They are certainly the lead in this. But I think the notion of strong language has always been a feature of OIC events. Strong action has never been. I'm not sure this is going to be very different. With only a couple of exceptions, I would question whether any of the countries in the OIC intend to do anything to, for example, downgrade their own relations with the United States. Would Saudi Arabia uh, cut its military ties and stop buying hundreds of billions of dollars of arms from the United States? Would Qatar agree to, to end the U.S. use of, of Qatari uh, soil for its base for fighting wars in the Middle East? Would other countries do anything to cut their ties with, with the United States. I don't see any evidence of that. There was no call for such things in the declaration. And I think this is likely to be one more example of very strong words and very weak action. I do sometimes wonder whether, wonder whether Donald Trump sort of read the small print before he makes policies or he makes these kind of announcements. But can you help us at all with what might have been said before this with Jared Kushner, with the meetings with Saudi Arabia, before this announcement was made? Just thinking, mm -hmm. trying to work out how we came to this position, which is so damaging within that yeah. area. Well, first of all, I think we should be very clear that the United States has never been an honest broker in Israeli-Palestinian talks. There's a lot of talk now about how this has ruined the U.S. role as the mediator. This has destroyed the peace talks. Well, first of all, there have been no peace talks for several years now. So there are no peace negotiations to be ruined by this. The U.S. has always been uh, a proponent of Israeli interests in those talks, sometimes more overtly, sometimes more quietly. But the consistency was very great. We heard that from U.S. negotiators themselves in some of their books. They've written that we acted, we, the U.S. negotiators, acted as Israel's lawyer. That was the words of one of them. That has never changed. So this isn't substantively such a magic, enormous change. Symbolically, it's very important. It is a clear rejection of international law, of U.N. resolutions, of certainly of the rights of the Palestinians. But that's an old story in a sense. What I think we're looking at here, there's no doubt that in the meetings between Jared Kushner and the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, uh, what some have called the bromance between the two Crown Princes, they have established a, a strong bond. They have discussed issues about region-wide uh, mobilization, particularly in building a mobilization against Iran. And in that context, the question of creating the conditions for an Israeli-Saudi rapprochement have pretty clearly been on that agenda. That rapprochement would be made much more difficult by this move. So it raises some real questions about the timing, why it happened just now. But I think we are looking at a situation where the wider goal of the United States in the region is to get something called peace talks underway, force the Palestinians somehow to accept parameters that they would otherwise be unwilling to accept in, with the threat that, for example, they would, the U.S. would close the PLO office in Washington, for example. Now even that is off the table, so I don't quite understand what their timing thinking was. But there is no doubt that this is tied to the broader regional goals of the United States, which has to do with supporting a rapprochement between Israel and Saudi Arabia, something that would, under ordinary circumstances, be difficult but would be made easier if Saudi Arabia could claim there are peace talks underway. We don't have to worry about the Palestinians so much. There are peace talks. There are peace talks. Now there are no peace talks. There are no illusions of peace talks. And I think that job of creating this region-wide Saudi-led coalition against Iran is going to be much more difficult as a result. Whether President Trump realized that was going to be the result is unclear whether it was simply because Jared Kushner's own allegiance to Israeli interests and particularly 
the settlement movement, which he has supported for a long time, whether that was the, the primary uh, interest here, some of that we just don't know yet. We'll be watching very carefully, though. Phyllis Bennis, thank you very much for giving us your thoughts.